I'm Aaron Rutten, and today I'll be drawing on the Wacom One display tablet while connected to my smartphone. Yes, that's right folks, I'm not connected to a desktop or laptop, just a little device that fits in my pocket. In addition to creating a demo drawing, I'll also show you how to set everything up, and I'll share my thoughts on the mobile painting experience with the Wacom One. Quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Wacom, but they did send me the Wacom One drawing tablet unconditionally to review as I please. As always, all opinions in this video are my own. Okay, so if you watched my previous review of the Wacom One, you'll remember that I said my device wasn't on the list of compatible devices. And that was true. But I was so excited to try drawing on a smartphone with the Wacom One that I finally caved and bought a new phone. And the people at the phone store were like, whoa, dude, you use the Samsung Galaxy S7? That's like so ancient. So for clarity, my Samsung Galaxy S7 and Galaxy Tab A non S Pen version were not compatible with the Wacom One but the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus that I upgraded to is. I also picked up a mini USB-C hub that is required to output video and data from your compatible Android device to your Wacom One. The hub converts one USB-C port into an HDMI port, three USB-A ports, and an Ethernet port. And as a bonus, this will come in handy when I work with the Mobile Studio Pro. I wanted to try connecting the Wacom One to my phone using just a USB-C cable, but the port on the Wacom One is shaped to make you face the cable in a certain direction, which makes it impossible to plug in a standard USB-C cable. So I don't know whether or not that works instead of using a hub, but I suspect you need the hub. I'll put affiliate links to the hub and the other gear that I'm using in the description of this video. So let's get down to some setup. We'll start by looking at how to connect the Wacom One to your smartphone. Let's assume that your smartphone is powered on. First, I'll plug the USB-C end of the X cable into the Wacom One, and connect it to an outlet or power source. Today I'll be running the power entirely from a battery bank called the OmniCharge 20. Or in other words, I'm not even gonna plug this thing into the wall. Next I'll plug the USB-A and HDMI cables into the USB-C hub. And the last step is to plug the hub's USB-C cable into your smartphone. Turn on the Wacom One with the power button on the top right. And what happens next will vary depending on the device that you're using. Because I'm using a Samsung device, I'm getting the Samsung DeX desktop mode, try saying that fast three times. This basically turns your phone into a full screen desktop interface. Now this is pretty rad on its own, but it gets even better. I'll click on the little grid icon in the bottom left of the taskbar to bring up a list of my apps. And I'll launch Infinite Painter, but you can use Ibis Paint, Medibang, or whatever art app you prefer. You can install these through the Google Play Store. And Presto, your art app that was once confined to a tiny phone screen, suddenly expands to fill your entire tablet. Now try drawing with your pen. You should be able to press harder or lighter to vary your brush width and or opacity. This of course depends on the brush that you have selected as well as the brush settings. This is also assuming that your art app supports pen pressure to begin with. If your art app supports pen tilt, you can also draw and shade with the side of your pencil depending on the brush you have selected. I'll test some other art apps so you can get a feel for how the tablet performs. Here's a few quick doodles in Painter Mobile. In order to get this to go full screen, I had to force screen to resize in Dex Labs. This app was made for older versions of Android, but it still works on a newer device. Kind of fun to see Corel's mobile painting app here. And here's Ibis Paint. And as you can see, I can draw with pen pressure in this application as well. So now that we've done some basic testing of our pen to see that it works, let's move on to discuss how we can customize our digital art setup. While working in Android mode, I wasn't able to find a Wacom control panel like you would get when you connect to a desktop computer. That means there isn't a way to customize your pen pressure and set the button on your pen to a global shortcut for all applications. But some art applications do offer those settings in app. Infinite Painter, for example, allows me to customize the pen pressure and other pen properties. However, I didn't see any effect on my pressure. So I'm kind of stuck with a level of pressure that I don't like. I hope Wacom or Samsung can make a control panel where we can customize our pen. The Wacom One also supports a few other pens. I really enjoyed drawing with the Stadler Norris pencil with Infinite Painter's pencil brush. It felt very natural to shade with the side of the pencil. As far as customizing your UI, that's really going to depend on the app. There isn't as much room for customization because mobile art apps are designed for a small screen. So don't expect you'll be able to drag windows and panels as easily as you can on a Mac or a PC. Now let's move on to performance. First we'll talk about lag. There shouldn't be any abnormal lag because the Samsung Galaxy S10 is meant to output video. There is of course some lag for all display tablets, 
but working on a phone didn't seem to impact that. The primary cause of lag is due to the hardware and software you're using, as well as the size and complexity of the brushes you're using and the size of your document. Phone hardware is nowhere near as powerful as a desktop computer hardware because phones are meant to save power, whereas a desktop can wheeze as much juice as it wants. So painting on a phone should be a bit more sluggish. But fortunately, mobile art apps are already pretty watered down so that they aren't too taxing on your hardware. Even with the largest brushes I could use in Infinite Painter, I wasn't able to see any significant lag. Now let's move on to discuss touch, or lack of touch. The Wacom One does not support touch, so you'll have to navigate with your pen or use your phone for touch input. That means if your art app requires touch to zoom, pan, or rotate, you won't be able to do that on the screen of the Wacom One. Because these mobile apps assume that you have touch, many do not offer navigation tools within the app's UI. Although it's a little awkward, my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus allows me to use my phone as a touchpad, so I can navigate that way. But I definitely prefer to have a zoom tool within the art app itself. Another consideration is that there's no mouse cursor when you're using the pen, so when you hover the pen in Samsung desktop mode, you do not see a mouse cursor under your pen. It's not the end of the world, but I do like the option of showing a cursor. Fortunately, Infinite Painter gives me the option to show a brush ghost, so I'm happy with that. You can, however, show a mouse cursor if you use the Samsung trackpad on your phone. Moving on to keyboard and express keys, the Wacom One does not have any external express keys for invoking commands. But then again, I don't know if your Android device would even recognize them. Nevertheless, you may want to pair a Bluetooth keyboard with your device to at least make it easier to label files and layers. If you don't want to lug around a keyboard, you can also use the on-screen keyboard on your phone or on the Wacom One using your pen, or you can also use voice to text, which I think is really cool. Artwork. Moving on to battery consumption, you will of course want to turn your phone screen off to save power unless you need it on for the trackpad or something else. The USB-C hub also draws power from your device. Unfortunately, I was not able to charge my phone with a wireless charger, even though that feature is supported. I guess it has to do with the wireless charging being disabled when the USB-C cable is plugged in. And now for my conclusion. If you have the option of connecting your Wacom One to a computer, I would do that, because you're going to have access to better apps and performance should be better. But honestly, I'm stunned. I could totally work with just the Wacom One connected to my phone. The Infinite Painter app has some great tools, and so this setup would be perfect for a beginner. Shoot, this might be good for even a pro who wants a more mobile workstation for those times when they're away from the studio but want to paint. The Wacom One Android experience is miles away from painting with your finger. In fact, I won't ever paint with my finger again. I just won't. Now certainly something like a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro would be a more elegant solution for a mobile painter, but even that gets a little clustered if you add in a keyboard, USB hub, and a power bank, which you probably will if you plan on using your tablet for more than a few hours a day. I also want to mention that you can use the Wacom One between a phone and a desktop. Just export your artwork as a cross-compatible format like Photoshop PSD, or a proprietary format for the apps that offer both a mobile and desktop version. Then you can connect the Wacom One to your desktop or laptop and import the artwork to work on. You may even be able to save your artwork to cloud storage to access it from both devices. This is definitely cool, and it makes me happy that a display tablet-enabled digital art experience is now within the reach of more artists. I think right now the price of compatible phones still makes it a bit pricey to get into, but when those models of phones become obsolete, there's a generation of artists who are going to grow up painting on their dad's old phone rather than a laptop. The companies who make these art apps would be insane not to immediately update their apps to support display tablets like the Wacom One and its lack of touch capability. And I believe they will. We'll see mobile art apps becoming more desktop-like and more artists using them. We'll see more apps that have a desktop and mobile version with cross-compatible files stored in the cloud. It's very exciting. Cloudy sky. So that was my look at using the Wacom One on an Android device. Check out my review of the Wacom One, as well as my other drawing tablet reviews. And if you want some bonus review footage, become a member of my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.